Well, this is a video that's probably a little bit overdue because we are going to be comparing the SIG 365XL to the Glock 43X MOS right here. And I know it's been a while and these have both been out a while, but I waited a little bit long to get a 365 and I wanted to get a lot of rounds through it and some carry time with it and some range time with it before I started to really compare these two in the videos. So if you are new to the channel or this is your first time here, welcome. But if you've been around for a while, you know that I have carried a Glock either for work in some form or fashion or another or for home protection, personal protection for a very long time. Now, I don't have to have any will against it. I love it. I would trust my life to it any day of the week. But the Sig Bud, specifically the 320X series, bit me hard about two years ago in the way of the not only the X full right here, if the camera zooms in on that for you, but at the same time or shortly after, I really got the X carry and hands down have become some of my favorite pistols to run out on the range. And that is really what spurred me to get the 365 because I wanted to put that one to the test because I really thought it was going to be a solid replacement for that summer EDC carry. So before we go any further, a huge heartfelt thank you to all of you out there, especially my patrons. We just passed 100K. More information on the 100K giveaway video at the end of this one, but moving on. So after all of that waiting, I finally picked up the 365 XL because it was the one I felt was the best fit. Now, if you've already made a decision between the 43X MOS and the 365 XL or another, I'm really curious to know what it is down in the comments. All right, let's tackle that range footage and performance first. Then we're getting into the size, the specs, all those details side by side that you guys want to know if you are interested in these two. And then we're going to talk about one thing that really bugs me about one of these every single time I take it out to the range. And we will start off with that P365. So I waited far too long to buy this thing after the SIG bug biting me. But hands down, the 365 XL, it just feels bigger than it is out there on the range and i enjoy the way the recoil and everything out here goes with it even though i have larger hands it just seems to fit and the length of that slide seems just about perfect for a smaller pistol to really control that recoil impulse out there now the sig trigger is usually pretty flat on all of the 320 series it just kind of feels like a put like it just kind of happens the reset's flat the brake is flat i have to say on the sig 365 it feels a lot better than its larger counterparts it feels much more crisp, both on that brake and that reset. So I don't know if that's just mine. If you guys have experienced the same thing, it was definitely noticeable right away. When it comes to the accuracy and the ergonomics of this thing, it's phenomenal. And I've said this before, the SIG 320X series seems to kind of hide some deficiencies for me. I can be a little bit sloppy with my skills out there and still just be right where I wanna be. Now the ergonomics are great for me. So I find these more neutral angles much more pleasant to use out there on the range than the Glock because I don't have to force my wrist in an angle it doesn't want to be at. That may not be your thing. That's just the way it feels for me. And even though I have an optic on that 365, I will say that green extra bold sight the SIG puts on there from the factory on the X series has become one of my favorites. That green, if you don't know, there's legit science on it that shows that green is a better light color for the human eye across the light spectrum as compared to like red or something like that. So those sights definitely very, very nice from the factory. The grip texture on the 365 feels great. It's got that nice sandpaper texture that's not over aggressive or under aggressive. They seem to have gotten it just about right. And that single finger groove in the grip module really helps me keep a very high grip on there and just control that recoil and bowls a little bit better, especially for a smaller pistol. The controls on the SIG are very natural. The mag release, the slide stop, slide release. I had no problems working with either of those out there. And again, it feels like a little bit larger of a pistol than it really is. Plenty of texture to get a hold on that slide stop, slide release if you wanna work that, or if you wanna go over the top to work the slide, completely up to you. There are advantages and disadvantages of both. Mag release is good. You can put that on the left side or the right side, much like the Glock. But overall, both of them are gonna do everything you need them to do, and they feel pretty good doing it. For the overall range performance out there on the 365, it's been outstanding, like I said. Seems to hide some of my deficiencies. I've had no problems running any of the ammo I've tested through it, from self-defense, hollow point ammunition, to regular basic ball ammo, and to some reloaded ammo. I've not shot any steel through it. I don't know if anybody else has experience with that, but I just don't have any steel laying around right now. So the performance out there was definitely better than expected, especially for a smaller pistol. And moving into that 43X MOS. So that was a dedicated summer carry for those lighter clothing months because it's super hot in Arizona. But that actually bled over into me carrying that thing a lot more than I thought I would because it really gives me like a Glock 19 MOS package, but in a much slimmer, smaller, 
lighter weight platform, especially with those S15 mags, but still gave me the ability to control and run it much like a Glock 19. And surprise, surprise, I've had zero issues with the 43X MOS out on the range. Everything from the ammo, the bunch of aftermarket parts I've tried on this thing to test them out. It's chewed through all the ammo, has not given me a single problem. I think maybe I had like a light primer strike or something from some like imported ammo. That ain't the Glock. That's the 15 cent or 22 cent piece of ammo or whatever it costs. So stop blaming your gun for the garbage ammo you're shooting. But it's been an absolute runner and an absolute performer, which is what we should expect out of Glock. Now the slim lines are not known for having the best trigger out there, even in the Glock world. I will say there's a notable difference with the slim lines being a little bit grittier and a little bit heavier than standard size Glocks, but it's gonna do everything you need it to do. It's a combat trigger, a work trigger. It's just not gonna feel great while it's getting the job done. Grip-wise and ergonomics here, it's nothing sexy, it's nothing special. That standard Glock stipple pattern on there, it's enough to hold on to, but it could use a little bit of love in the texture area. It's got the same Glock angles, no finger grooves on the slim lines or the Gen 5s. Overall, it's gonna give you what you're going to expect from Glock. I will say this though, they nailed the grip size. I don't know what it is about it because it's definitely smaller than a Glock 19, it's just the right size. So it feels again like it's a bigger pistol. You can run it like it's a bigger pistol than some of its peers in that like micro or slimline or subcompact category, but it's still smaller and lighter than say a Glock 19 and some other compact stuff out on the market like say the CZ P10C, which is actually large for a compact. They just seem to have gotten that grip size right. The controls here again on the Glock, I am so used to the mag release and the slide stop slide release on the Glocks that I have no problem running them out there. I don't think anybody's gonna have a problem. Even if you've got bigger hands, the 43X again just feels like a larger pistol and you really can't run this thing at a very high rate of speed, especially for the size category that it fits in. So no problems there. I enjoy working this thing from the holster. I enjoy working slide stop slide release on there, mag exchanges. Everything just seems to work right with the way it's laid out. One more thing on that grip though, it is a pretty aggressive angle. It's that natural Glock angle. And I find myself aiming really high. So until I force my wrist downward, I'm like literally inches higher than where I wanna be. And that's just the difference between like two to three degrees on grip angle. And that is really something to pay attention to, especially for those of us that may have like one thing that we carry out there for kind of winter and something different completely, especially in angles that we carry for summer. Always pay attention to those angles. The performance and accuracy of that Glock is gonna be everything you would expect, and it's gonna be completely up you on those fundamentals. What I will say when it comes to the fundamentals here, whereas the SIG series, the X series, even that 365 seems to be a little more forgiving, the Glock seems to magnify my deficiencies should I make a mistake in how I'm slapping that trigger or doing something wrong out there, not just really concentrating on the fundamentals. It seems to be the Glock magnifies it and the SIG kind of minimizes that. And I don't know exactly what it is, but for me, I think I've narrowed it down to that more aggressive grip angle. So for me, that aggressive grip angle is not natural. So when I do make a mistake, it's magnified, whereas something with a less aggressive angle seems to perform a little bit better for me when I'm maybe not doing the best things I should when it comes to fundamentals. All right, I know that was a lot of information on the range. Let's look at these up close side by side, test these triggers out right next to each other so you guys have a really good idea about the specs and how these things are right next to each other. All right, the SIG 365 and the Glock 43X MOS. We are gonna start off by just comparing side by side the actual sizes of these two. So you get a really good idea of the length, the width and all this stuff, because they are very, very similar. You can see on the SIG, uh, barrels are almost the same, but the Glock barrel just protrudes a little bit more, whereas the SIG is dang near flush on there. Width wise, it's not really gonna make a huge difference here. And then overall length wise, you're gonna pick up just maybe a hair from where that SIG passes at the bottom right there. And you can get all kinds of different mag extensions or completely different aftermarket mags, like in the case of the Glock right here. So ultimately size wise, not a massive difference between the two right there. Now let's talk about the differences in the trigger pulls real quick, because the SIG, as you know, does not have a trigger shoe safety in there, flat feeling right there. And it does feel quite nice. So that is your take up. That's your brake. Here's your reset right there. Brake one more time. So overall, not bad. I will say 
trigger on the smaller SIGs seems to feel better than on the larger ones. I don't know why. So Glock, you have your standard trigger shoe safety. There's your take up, your brake. There's your reset and a brake right there. So we're going to go ahead and do a couple of trigger pulls side by side to get a good idea. And I'm going to use the manual one. I know a viewer sent in a digital one, but the digital one's got a really wide grasping claw on it. So sometimes it gets stuck and I want these to be as good as possible. So starting off with the Glock here, we'll try to pull from the same place on both of them. It's heavy. So that was just over six pounds right there. Six pounds, two ounces. We'll just do two on each unless one of them gets a really crazy reading. Um, but if they're similar, we'll just go with it. All right. So dead nuts, almost the same place. Six pounds, maybe four ounces or right between two and four ounces. So not bad at all, but what you can expect when it comes to that 43 X series. So on the SIG here, try that flat face X out about five pounds and six ounces on it right there. Do one more. All right. So that one about exactly the same place, five pounds and six ounces. So not only a big difference in the actual feel of the trigger, but a big difference in how that trigger is going to break. Just going to put these mags back in here. Now talking about the different angles here. So the angles on the SIG 365 are going to be much more neutral than the Glock. So if I get these kind of put them on the edge of the table here, get the slides flat as I can, you're going to see, oops, there it goes. You're going to see a definite difference in the angle back towards the bottom of the grip on that 43 X. Try and get these flat again for you right there. You'll kind of see, the 43 X popping out right there. So that's going to be the big difference in the degree of the angles. It's right here. Cause that's where the final part of your hand is going to be. Just makes it a little bit different between the two of them. Now the texture between these two of them, the SIG is going to have that more sandpaper style texture right there. You can see, and it's going to be all the way around that grit, plenty of grit on there. It's not abrasive, but it's very aggressive on it. And it's just everywhere. So when we get to that 43 X MOS, really standard Glock stuff going on here. Nothing terrible, but nothing great. Just kind of a dot pattern, like a dipping dot, but for a pistol, um, it's okay. Not necessarily terrible. Now the trigger guards on here, and we're going to talk a lot more about the trigger guards here in a minute. Very, very standard Glock trigger guard right there to get a finger in there. You can kind of get an idea of how much room you have. And then on the SIG, it is much more sloped right there. And you can see a little tighter to get in the front of that trigger guard. So that is definitely something to pay attention to. And again, we're going to talk more about that. Both of these are going to be that uh, RMSC pattern direct to slide. I do have an aftermarket plate on the 43 X because the hollow sun does not fit direct to that pattern but these are both direct milled in the slide. You don't need a plate as long as your optic doesn't require one. We're going to get front and rear serrations on both of these. We're going to get accessory rails on both of these and the magazine releases on both of these are going to be reversible, but they are not ambi pistols. They are set up for righties from the factory. And the other big difference is the SIG is the chassis system. So if you do not know, when you take this apart, the entire control module system in the SIG right here, you pull that pin and you pull the whole thing out and you can swap grip modules within like a minute. Uh, Glock, let's just say, doesn't have that technology right now. Well, those were the basics, but for those of you that need those detailed specs in that elevator music, here you go. All right, so what was that one thing that I talked about earlier that really bugs me about one of these pistols every single time I go to the range? Now, again, I've carried that 43X MOS for some time. I enjoy it. I love it. It's the full package. Basically gives you a Glock 19 and the same feel of a Glock 19 on the range recoil-wise in a smaller and lighter and slimmer package to carry. That SIG bug bit me hard, though. I love the 320X series, that full size, that X carry outstanding some of my favorites to take out on the range but 
in the store, sometimes things feel different than they do out on the range. And I do have to say, when I felt that 365 XL in the store, it feels good. Again, reminds me of that VP9. It felt good in the hand, fit in the pocket of my hand, and I really just couldn't wait to get it out on the range. And when I did, within the first couple of shots, this is what I said. This is one of the most uncomfortable guns I have ever shot. Like getting my finger in that trigger guard is murder. Look at that. And there is a reason for that. So if you look at the trigger guard on that, the way it is sloped and how it goes back in there like that, I bypass it or I catch it all the time like this and I either bypass the trigger or I would slap that trigger on that first shot just because of how long my finger is on there. You can see it right there. And then you can compare that to where it is on the 43X. You see how much less of my finger is sticking out the front right there? Well, that made a big difference out there. And it just seemed to be something for me having larger hands that every time I went to move my finger, I would just slide across that and had some trouble out there with it. Now, not everybody's gonna have that problem. So if you've got those double XL size hands, this might be an issue. And it's not an issue with like my aftermarket uh, grip modules, like say from Icarus, but those things are like 300 bucks or plus, actually like 350 or something for some of them. So that was the one thing, I mean, bugs the crap out of me every time I go to the range, but I still just love the way this thing feels in the hand. Ultimately gonna come down to a training issue, but definitely something to pay attention to when you're making a choice. And I know it's not just me with that because my buddy Jonathan from Tactical Toolbox he has that problem with almost every smaller pistol, except for the 43X. That's the one that he kind of likes. I've never had that issue with even my Hellcats or the 43X or the 43. It only seems to be the 365, so I guess that's just the one that finally made it different for me. So if you've had that experience with either of these or another pistol or maybe something else, I'm really curious to know in the comments because that helps me keep an eye out for other things I should be looking out for so we can kind of all learn from each other. So ultimately between these two, I am not going to knock either of them. I think both of these are absolutely great pistols. There are some advantages and some disadvantages depending on the angles you want, the size of your hands. But I think either of these is going to do you great. And I really try not to choose between one or the other because I don't want to make that choice for you. What I want to do is give you the best information I can on my experience, put them right next to each other so you guys can go to the store with the best information, whether you have bigger hands, smaller hands, or whatever you're looking for, and make the best choice for you so you don't waste time or waste money buying the wrong thing and then having to go different route later on down the road. And I know somebody's already butthurt in the comments about something I said about one over the other, but remember, we're all different. We're all different sizes. We all have different ergonomics and angles we like. So just remember, don't freak out too bad. Well, make sure you get subbed up and turn those notifications on so you know when a video is coming out. Check out any of those links down below. Those are a huge help to the channel or the Patreon if you are interested. Now, talking about that 100K giveaway, we've got a bunch of stuff still coming in. But so far, we've got TriStar Trading with some swag packs, hats, clothing, patches, stickers, that stuff. Hidden Hybrid Holsters bringing a concealed carry pack with holsters and belts, other stuff like that. Apex came through with some Glock and M&P trigger kits and failure-resistant extractors. We've got some blackout triggers, muzzle devices. I think we're going to have some Icarus grip modules. That is going to be really awesome if that comes through. Flatline Fiber is going to bring a range pack and several other companies to include Roscoe with some barrels. Really cool stuff coming. I will start posting pictures and details on when that video is coming so everybody gets a chance at that stuff. But some of that is going to be Patreon exclusive because those people make so much here happen on the channel. And that is what I've got for you all today. Get out there on the range, have some fun. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. I will see you all on the next one.